Okay, this video is about finding the global maximum and minimum of a function on an in infinite interval. And the strategy is a little bit different in this case. If, if you have a finite interval, then pretty much the strategy is to find the critical points and take the endpoints and then just plug all of those into your function and pick the biggest one and you've got the max, or the global max rather. And if you pick the smallest one, you've got the global min. But things are a little bit different on an inter infinite interval. Um, sometimes functions don't behave so well. Uh, and for example, maxes and mins might not exist. And here, here's a good example of that. So we're going to find the global max and the global min, if they exist, of the function f of x equals x plus 1 over x on the interval of positive numbers. So you could look at this as the interval 0 infinity. Okay, well, a lot of the strategy is the same. Uh, in this case, we know that global maxes and mins are going to occur at, uh, at endpoints or critical points. Now, we really only have one endpoint here. We only have the endpoint. Um, uh, we sort of have the endpoint 0, but if we look, our function isn't even defined there, so it's kind of like we don't have endpoints here. But so we still want to find the critical points because that's where local maxes and mins occur, so that's where we might get a global max and a min. So we can look at this function if I re-express this. Um, it's the same as x plus x to the minus 1. And I did that so we can differentiate it with the power rule. So we find that f prime of x, the derivative of x is 1, and the derivative of x to the minus 1 is minus x to the minus 2. Or equivalently, I could call this 1 minus 1 over x squared. OK, and if I want to find the critical points, I set this equal to 0. And I solve this equation. Now, how do I solve this equation? Well, I hate negative signs, so I'm going to move them 1 over x squared to the other side. So I get 1 equals 1 over x squared. And I also hate fractions, so I'm going to multiply by x squared. And there's a subtle point here. I need to make sure that this is not equal to 0 because I can't multiply by 0. That'll destroy my equation. But if we look here, x is never equal to 0. x is always positive. So in other words, I can say that this means that x squared equals 1 by multiplying by x squared on both sides. And now, we can now conclude that x equals 1 by taking a square root. And we don't have to worry about the negative square root of 1 again, because we're only worried about positive numbers. Okay. So I found the only critical point that I have, at least on this, on this interval. And now I want to classify, what, what is this? Is this a local min or a local max? And I am going to use the second derivative test. So if I take f double prime of x, then what do I get? Well, the derivative of 1 is 0. And the derivative of minus x to the minus 2 is, well, it's minus times minus 2. So I get plus 2, and then I reduce the power, and I get x to the minus 3. All right? And if I, um, first of all, if I plug in x equals 1, what do I get? I get f double prime of 1 is 2 times 1 to the minus 3, but, whoops, uh, but 1 to the minus 3, of course, is just 1. So I get that this is 2. And so since the second derivative is positive, this function is concave up at this point, x equals 1. And so this tells me that this is a local, uh, local minimum. So now what I'm going to tell you is that this is actually the global minimum. This is the global minimum. And the reason that this is the global minimum is that this function never has, it, it, it never has a chance to get lower than this, because not only is this function concave up at x equals 1, it's actually concave up everywhere. Because f double prime 
of x is what? Well, we can look at this as it being 2 over x cubed. And since, again, we're only looking at positive numbers, this is always going to be positive. Because if x is positive, x cubed is positive. And so 2 over positive is always positive. So this is concave up everywhere. So it has a shape like this everywhere. And this is my only critical point here at x equals 1. This would be at x equals 1. So this is, turns out to be my global minimum. Now, what is my maximum? And this is sort of the tough part. You have to realize that in this case, there is no maximum. And the reason that there is no maximum is that we're considering this for all the positive numbers, no matter how large they get. And if we notice what, what happens to this function as x becomes large, well, as x becomes large, 1 over x becomes very small. In fact, it kind of basically looks like 0 if x is really large, right? But x gets big. In fact, it'll just get as big as you want, because if x goes off to infinity, then of course x goes off to infinity. And so f of x is something that's like 0 plus something that's going to infinity. So f of x, um, we might write it like this. f of x goes to infinity as x goes to infinity. And so this tells us this is, that this function has no maximum, because no matter how high the function gets, if we just move x to the right, it's just going to get bigger. So this means no maximum. And that concludes this video.